Hi everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about vSphere HA Deep Dive Troubleshooting Part 3. In our previous session, we talk about the vSphere HA host level failure scenarios. And today, now I'm going to talk about network and data store failure scenarios. So the key questions are what will happen when H when the HA network fails? OK, and what will happen when your HA master is isolated from the network? And what will happen when the HA detects data store failures? And how does vSphere HA provide protection? OK, these four important questions we can discuss now. And what will happen when the HA network fails means within our vSphere infrastructure, all of the sudden one of the network switch is unable to communicate. Let's say core switch is not communicating or one of the virtual physical switch is not communicating, not communicating to our ESXA host. But uh, this scenario, this switch is connected to two ESXA hosts and other hosts connected to the different switches. So during this scenario, what will happen is our network become a partition so two hosts become one partition other four hosts become a another partition but usually within a cluster we require minimally one master and remaining host are considered as a secondary ESX host so within a, when the network is fail it will become a two partition within one partition there is a master host and immediately there is a another master also created because this associated ESX host decides that our master is down and immediately within the four, it will elected one master ESX host. OK, so the here is the switch on the left side has lost connectivity with the rest of the network. Whatever the network switches we have, the rest of the network unable to communicate to the switch. So that means only this switch connected host become as one partition and remaining host connected host become a another partition. OK, and other key points are this creates two network partition since the two hosts previously secondary one is secondary one primary cannot communicate with original master and a new master is elected in the new partition which results in a master in each partition. So we have a two part two master. Let's say after some time our network is reestablished but during the network failure scenario remember that we have to coordinate with our network team. So we need to work together to resolve this issue. So network team will help us to bring up the network connection up. Once the network connection is up, what will happen is as per our the vSphere HA turn vSphere HA concept, it's not recommend to maintain two masters. So it will keep maintain only one master. That is the final outcome. So when the issue is resolved, one of the master will allow one master for the entire cluster as as was the case before the network failure. OK, but uh, we have to involve the network team as well during this scenario. OK, so let's talk about the another scenario. What will happen when HA master is isolated from the network, but this time not all the host and not in the network level failover, but all of the sudden our HA master isolated means separated from the network. That can be either ESXA host hung state or ESXA host CPU memory consuming over 90% at certain period it may become a hung and it will unable to send the network heartbeats and data store heartbeats to all our associated ESXA host so that scenario what will happen is again same like our previous scenario here also immediately it will elect a new master within our other secondary ESX host okay a master reports the host has partitioned or isolated when it cannot communicate with the host over the management network so but it can observe that a host data store heartbeats through the heartbeat data store. That means some scenarios virtual machines still run on the same master host. It won't migrate and restart on another host. OK, because it will still runs on a same ESX host, but immediately when the master lose the communication between the HDFDM agents or secondary host, it will elect a new secondary master, new 
master in our associated host that is key point but virtual machines there are two cases some cases virtual machine machine migrate and restarted on other host and some cases virtual machine still on a master host and it may require a host to restart but before restarting the host we have to get the customer approval and perform the virtual ESX host restart but before restarting the ESX host we can contact our all application users and ask them to gracefully shut down the virtual machines once they gracefully shut down the virtual machine then only we can restart the esx host and finally we have to send send the esx host log master host log and also the affected master host log these three logs we have to send it to vmware technical support team for further investigation to find the actual root cause for the master host isolated from the network okay and still if you want to analyze yourself and your manager wanted to do quick analysis means you can refer to the fdm.log and using the fdm.log we can find the additional clues why the uh, master host become isolated from the network okay and finally this where isolation response setting takes effect okay and another scenario what will happen when your HA detects data store failure? So until now, we talk about mainly two scenarios, host failure scenarios, network failure scenarios. Now coming to the third key scenario is data store failures. So within the data store failure, this is our architecture. Earlier we talked about host and the network. Now we should concentrate on the data store level. Definitely there is a scenario data store connections also may disconnected from our network like a HBA storage devices, HBA card or iSCSI HBA card or network attached storage connections may lost. This can be predictable when we are using a we spear infrastructure in our organization. So this is also one possibility. So let's understand how we can address this scenario. So this scenario, we have to enable the vSphere HE architecture have a VM component protection. That means virtual machine component protection. When we enable the VMCP option, what it will do is vSphere HE can detect data store accessibility failures and provide automated recovery for affected virtual machines. So this option also we have in vSphere HE. But recommendation is VMCP protection should be enabled. And VMCP provides protection against data store accessibility failures that can affect a VM running on the host in vSphere HA cluster. When, when a data store accessibility failures, the affected host can no longer access the storage path for a specific data store. And we can determine the response that vSphere HA will make to a such failure range, ranging from the creation of events alarms to virtual machine restarts on other host. OK, this is the ex expected behavior. And in addition, we can expect to within the data. So there are two types of failures. One is PDL, that means permanent device loss. That means the complete HBA code faulty or that may also happen some cases. And another is all paths down. As we know, within our storage protection policies, we have a three types of path selection policies. Fixed, round robin, MRU. Fixed means generally we can use the fixed policy for it depends on the storage vendor. They will provide the recommendation storage policies like fixed MRU, most recently used, and also the round robin. So whatever the path selection policy we are using, but there are some cases device may loss or there may be a path may be down. When the device loss means it's completely an unrecoverable loss of accessibility occurs when the storage device reports the data store is no longer accessible by the host. So this condition cannot be reverted without powering of virtual machine. Even this scenario also, we need to ask our customer to provide the downtime for the power of virtual machine because without uh, getting the approval, if you do any of the activity, it may cause us the SLA breach but make sure that get the necessary approval before performing this scenario okay and all paths down represents transient or unknown accessibility loss or any other unidentified delay on delay in input output processing this type of accessibility issue is still recoverable because all paths down means definitely there will be a multi path uh, the specific paths are down still we can access by using a 
standby path or alternative path. But this scenario can be recoverable, but we may expect the issue is IO latency. Okay. And until now, we covered the mainly three scenarios, host failure scenario, network failure scenario, and also the data store failure scenario. Now let me introduce the virtual machine level also. Some uh, some organization, we even they wanted to enable the vSphere HA protection on virtual machine level also. So virtual machine consists of a operating system and application. So protection can be taken care of both OS level protection, application level protection. Let's understand those two points now. So vSphere HA architecture VM monitoring. When we enable a VM monitoring, it will help us in case of application down or operating system down. Immediately, vSphere HA will help you to restart the virtual machine. Once we most of the application down OS down scenarios, restart may help to resolve the issue. But instead of doing a manual intervention, our vSphere HA will help to do automatic restart. That is the importance here. But only condition is within our vSphere HA here we have to enable virtual machine monitoring option okay so vm monitoring restart individual virtual machines if they their vmware tools heartbeats are not received within a set time okay and similarly application monitoring can you restart your vm if the heartbeats for your application it is running or not received okay these two scenarios only it will attempt for a automatic reboot OK, and when when can we can enable sorry, we can enable these features and configure the sensitivity with the e with which we spear HA monitor non responsiveness. But some organization they may prefer to enable VM monitoring for all the uh, testing development and production and uh, some organization if they have any sensitive time sensitive application, they may also it's a subjected to be customer choice. They want to enable vSphere HA VM monitoring or disable vSphere HA VM monitoring. OK, but uh, at the end of the day, we can follow as per the customer regulations only. OK, now. Let's uh, quickly recap all our vSphere HA production mechanisms. OK, the key question here is how does vSphere HA provide protection? OK, so all our five scenarios we can conclude now. See vSphere HA protection scenarios. When we configure vSphere HA, no actions are required to protect new VMs. We no need to do any changes in the VM level. All workloads, workloads means virtual machines, are automatically protected by vSphere high availability. And high availability provides rapid recovery from outages and cost effective HA for applications running in virtual machines. And HA protects application availability in several ways. Now, here is the complete takeaway points. So protection against ESXi host failure, virtual machine failure, application failure, data store accessibility failure, and network isolation. That means network separated or network level failures. So how does vSphere HA provide protection is all the scenarios, the common solution is restart, but few scenarios only instead of restart, we can ask the customer downtime to power off and then restart. OK, and the first scenario host failure scenario by restarting the virtual machines on other host within the cluster and VM failure means by restarting the virtual machine when your VMware tool heartbeats not received within a set time. OK, and application failure by restarting the VM when application heartbeat is not received within a set time. OK, and data store accessibility failure by restarting affected VMs on other hosts that still can access the data stores and network isolation also by restarting VMs if their host become isolated on the management or virtual SAN network. This protection is provided even if the network becomes partitions or separated. OK, so just uh, review all these five scenarios even in the interview you may expect any of one scenario questions okay so but the some customers they may not accept the restart also they are not agree for minimal downtime but during that scenario what vmware providing the additional solution to provide 100 percent availability is that solution called vSphere fault tolerance fault tolerance usually it provides zero data loss and zero data protection so fault tolerance troubleshooting mechanisms we can uh, discuss in the next session okay that's it for today 
Thanks for your time. Please do view, like, share and subscribe to my channel, Nand Cloud Garage, if you are watching this video first time. If you are already subscribed, thanks for your support. It's really encouraging me to do more technical videos. Bye for now.